हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आर सीरीज नेशनल इनकम एट ईज सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स वेर इन वी हैव स्टडीड द डिफरेंट टर्मिनोलॉजीज रिलेटेड टू मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स लाइक योर डोमेस्टिक टेरिटरी सिटीजनशिप रेसिडेंटशिप फैक्टर इनकम इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स फाइनल गुड्स all of those things right so i hope that part was very clear to all of you if still you all have any doubts then you can any day post a comment okay so in this video we are going to start with national income and related aggregates this is going to be our video 3 wherein we are going to discuss about national income as well as its related aggregates so before starting this series let us understand what is national income so in a very simple and a layman language national income is nothing but value of goods and services produced in one financial year so i know hope you all know what is financial year right so value of goods and services produced in one financial year is nothing but national income now we know we produce goods we produce services and all the things are produced in the economy for some economic motives for some monetary motives so when i sell goods for say suppose i have sold out 1000 pieces of mobile phones so what is this 1000 this 1000 is nothing but an unit same way if i say i have sold 5 kg of rice same way i would say that i have sold 200 liters of milk so can i measure national income with the use with the use of unit kg liters can i uh, calculate the national income with all of these units with different units no it becomes very difficult to calculate the total production of goods and services with these units because every goods is produced or sold out with different units like it could be pieces it could be kgs it could be grams it could be liters so there are different different units related to different goods same way there are different units with services doctor is providing the service of his uh, profession teacher is providing his services lawyer is providing his services so likewise we cannot calculate national income with the help of these units that is why we have come to a conclusion that we will be measuring national income in terms of money okay the common term or the common unit using which we can or we will measure national income would be money so there are different aggregates using which we are going to understand the concept of national income that how do we actually measure the units of different goods and services so this is what in a very simple language national income is the total value value over here is nothing but the price the money which is going to be involved in the exchange of goods and services so as i already said that we cannot measure the value of goods and services in terms of their units because it could be in pieces it could be in liters it could be in milliliters or it could be in kgs grams and so on so it becomes very difficult for the nation to calculate national income in such a manner that is why we say that we will be measuring national income in terms of money we will be making an aggregate of all the goods and services produced in the economy when i talk about aggregates there are total eight aggregates in the economy there are total eight aggregates now these aggregates cannot be increased or it cannot be decreased they are the fact that we are going to have eight total aggregates in an economy 
So I hope you all got a little bit of idea that what the video is going to talk about, right? So next thing what we are going to talk is about aggregate. So there are many aggregates in national income to measure the value of goods and services in terms of money. This is what I said. With the help of aggregates, we are going to measure the value of goods and services in one financial year. And when we talk about aggregates, there are going to be total eight aggregates which are there in the economy or which will help basically in measuring the value of goods and services. Value is nothing but the money which is going to be involved while exchanging the goods and services. Let's face the fact we are studying economics and we have already discussed that in economics nothing is going to be happening for social welfare or anything is not going to take place without the exchange of money. Economics is all about capital, finance and money. So here also when the goods and services are produced in an economy, they are going to be sold out in the economy sold out with some value, with some price. So this we cannot measure with the different different units. That is why we will be measuring it with the help of an aggregate. When we talk about aggregate, there are total eight aggregates in the economy, which will help us to measure the value of goods and services in terms of money. Let us first of all understand the few terminologies. As I always say that before going to the important concept it is mandate for us to understand the terminologies used in that concept so here also we are going to do the same thing first of all we are going to understand the terminologies and then we will be proceeding ahead so when i start with the terms first term is gross and net now i think we have already studied something like this in our previous video. So if everybody has watched that video, well and good. But if you have not watched it, please go and watch that video first and then come and see this video. It will be more easier for you all to relate what is going on in the session. So gross and net are the two terms. If in a very simple language I tell you about gross, gross is nothing but the actual value the actual value of any goods or services. Whereas net is the value after deductions. Gross is the actual value of goods and services. Net is the value which we get after deductions. Majorly what deductions here we are talking about? Here we are talking about depreciation. Not understood? We'll understand it with the help of an example. Say suppose I am purchasing a mobile phone. I have purchased a mobile phone. This mobile phone has cost me say suppose 1200 rupees. Okay. I have purchased a mobile phone which has costed me 1200 rupees. Now, after a while, say suppose after two years, I am going in the market to sell this mobile phone. Will I get the entire 1200 rupees? No, because we know that every asset, everything, the value keeps on depreciating. So, when I go to market, I get only 1000 rupees. So what was this 200 rupees? Where this 200 rupees gone? So this 200 rupees is nothing but the depreciation. And the actual value at which I have purchased the mobile phone that is 1200 rupees is going to be gross amount. The amount left with me after the deductions of depreciation is going to be the net value or the net amount. So I hope it is clear to you all, gross is the actual value of a particular goods and net is the value which is left out after the deductions. See any asset if we talk about after depreciation, after, once it gets depreciated, the value which you will get for that good will not be the same at which you might have purchased. 
right here i have taken the example of phone mobile phone you all also can take the example of a machinery okay machine equipment tools whatever you all want so gross let us come to next two terms that is domestic and national domestic with the name itself you all should understand because again this term we have discussed in our last video domestic means any goods and services produced within the domestic boundary so if this is my country india ignore my drawing so if this is the country india any goods and services produced within this country within this domestic territory will be domestic income that means i am not going to consider my any income coming from out of the country or out of india i will be not considering those kind of incomes i will be considering only the income which has been incurred within the domestic territory of my country where else if i talk about national income national income means here i am going to consider all the income which i am receiving from all over the nation not necessary be him be it be a resident or a non resident but i will be considering the income which i am getting from outside the country so for that we may basically make use of word net factor income from abroad net factor income from abroad in short nfia that means any income which i am incurring from outside the country i will be including it in my national income but any income which i am receiving from outside the country i will be not including it in my domestic income so see suppose i have incurred an income from usa i means what our country india so india has received income from usa so this income will go into which category whether it will go to domestic or whether it will go to national but obvious it will go to national it will not go to domestic income it will be only considered under national income because i am receiving income from other part of the country not even other part i am receiving the income from entirely other country so it will be coming under the category of national income wherein we call it as nfia net factor income from abroad that means the income which we have incurred from outside the country same way if i am paying to outside the country that will also be considered under national income that that is called as net factor income to abroad to means we are paying see it can be to it can be from to means we are paying and from means we are receiving okay so it can be net factor income to abroad it can be net factor income from abroad understand all these concepts very clearly because we are going to talk about it or we are going to use this terminologies for solving numerical questions as well as to understand the formula coming to the next term that is product product is nothing but your good right so product is a single term which we are going to use over here this product is nothing but the good next last two is factor cost and market price now we are in 12th standard we should know this much what is factor cost and what is market price factor cost is the total cost at which the goods are being getting reduced the total expense of the manufacturer who has invested in order to manufacture that particular commodity whereas market price is the price at which the good is going to be actually sold out for example to manu i am a manufacturer and i am manufacturing this pen to make this one pen i have to invest to make this one pen i have to invest 10 rupees 
this 10 rupees will include my everything my machinery charges my labor wages which i have paid to my labors purchase of raw materials rent given to land everything includes in this 10 rupees so to manufacture this one pen i will have to invest 10 rupees now when i go to market in order to sell this pen now i have produced it but obviously i'm going to sell it in the market i'm not going to keep it with me so i'm going to produce it in the market i'm going to sell it in the market when i go to market what will happen government will tell me government will come in between and government will tell me pay the taxes pay taxes because you have done production so for production or manufacturing goods and services you have to pay the taxes okay so now we pay gst usually we used to pay excise tax and all so now government will tell me to pay the taxes when i pay the taxes what will happen ultimately ultimately the price of the product will get increased to say suppose 12 rupees so to produce the pen i need the expense of 10 rupees but to sell the same pen i have to sell it for 12 rupees why because the manufacturer also needs some profit he cannot sell it in less than 10 rupees or exactly 10 rupees he will not do so so here comes indirect tax indirect tax is the tax for example if you all have ever ordered food from zomato or swiggy you could see that the cost of one burger is 100 rupees but when you add it to your cart and when you go for final payment you might have to pay 150 rupees what is this 50 rupees extra for so this is nothing but the form of indirect tax indirect tax will be getting shifted or the burden of indirect tax gets gets shifted on the customer as well the producer has to pay it as well as the buyer also has to pay it so this is what is indirect tax and here only we have studied one more term that was subsidies subsidies in a very layman language is nothing but the discount given by the government to the people for best example, LPG cylinders were given on a subsidized rate to people. So that is subsidies. So factor cost is the cost at which the goods and services are going to be produced. Market price is the price at which they are going to be sold out in the market after adding the taxes. Okay. So indirect tax and subsidies. Here also two terms very important. Next four domestic concepts so basically when i talk about aggregates these aggregates are going to be in the form of domestic concept as well as on national concept so like gdpmp gdpfc nnpmp nnpfc Likewise, you are going to have eight total aggregates. Four aggregates belong from domestic concept and four aggregates belongs from national concept. So, first of all, let us talk about the domestic concept. The four aggregates from domestic concepts are GDPMP, GDPFC, NDPMP, NDPFC. GDPMP, gross domestic product at market price gdpfc gross domestic product at factor cost ndpmp net domestic product at market price ndpfc is net domestic product at factor cost so these are the four major domestic concepts and domestic means what it signifies that the contribution of only those producers whether they are resident or non-resident doesn't matters but the contribution of only those producers will be considered or included who have produced the goods and services within the domestic territory of the country doesn't matter they are resident of the country or non-resident so remember these terms also we have studied in our previous video so i have already said that the previous video was very important because those terminologies are going to get used in all the economics part so you should know those terms and 
meaning of those terms. So, domestic concept basically will signify all the goods and services which are produced within the domestic territory doesn't matter whether the producer is a resident of the country or else a non-resident of the country. Anything which has been produced within this domestic territory will be considered under domestic concept. One by one, we are going to see the each concept. First is GDP at MP. Now, individually, I have already explained you the terms. You know what is gross. You know what is domestic. You know what is product. You know what is MP, right? That is market price. Now, together, you have to club it and understand the definition of it, okay? The definitions for GDP at MP. It refers to gross market value, Okay, so when it is given as market price, see certain things which you have to keep in mind, whenever they are writing MP or market price, market price will always include gross market value. G stands for gross, gross means what? Actual value of the good, actual value of the product without which includes depreciation. Okay, so gross is the actual value, market value because we, there is MP that is market price. Whenever they are writing market price, it will be called as market value. All the final goods and services. So also we have studied in this previous video, intermediate goods and final goods. While we calculate domestic income. Or for that matter, when we calculate national income, we will be including only and only the value of final goods. We will be not including the value of intermediate goods. Why this is done, how it is done, that we will be studying in our upcoming videos. But as of for now, just understand that whenever you calculate domestic income or whenever you calculate national income, we will be not including the value of intermediate goods. Only the value of final goods and services will be included. Within the domestic territory, so GDP here, D itself stands for domestic. That means all the goods and services which is produced within the domestic territory, within the domestic territory of a country during a period of one year. One year is your nothing but your financial year, which is from 1st April to 31st March. Gross means no provision has been made for depreciation. That is, it includes depreciation. I already said gross value will always include the depreciation. Say, suppose I have purchased a machinery for 20,000 rupees. This is my nothing but my actual value or gross value, which includes depreciation. Domestic, it includes goods and services produced by all the units located within the domestic territory, irrespective of the fact whether the producer is a resident or a non-resident. Unless and until the good has been produced within the domestic territory, that will be included in GDP at MP. Okay. Market price. Amount of indirect tax paid and excludes the amount of subsidy received, it shows NIT. So, how you can form a formula? You will get a formula from this. NIT is equals to IT minus subsidies. NIT stands for net indirect tax. IT stands for indirect tax, which is also known as GST minus subsidies. So, IT minus subsidies is nothing but your market price. Product, only final goods and services have to be included. So, as I already said, when you compute domestic income or when you calculate national income, only the value of final goods will be included over here. Value of intermediate goods will not be included. Now, moving towards our next aggregate. GDP at FC. Okay. 
Now entire definition if you see properly again it remains the same only few things are going to get changed over here. Again this is a domestic concept this falls under the concept of domestic. It refers to gross money value again G stands for gross which is nothing but actual value of goods and services and when we use the term factor cost we will be writing money value if you all noticed under MP we write market value very important very minute thing which we usually miss out but very important and when we write FC we will be using the term money value so whenever it is FC factor cost you will be writing gross money value when it is MP that is market price you will be writing gross market value okay money value or factor cost means we know so of all the final goods so yes all the final goods again because we already said that we will be not including the value of intermediate goods and services produced within the domestic territory of a country so again this is a domestic concept so but obvious all the goods and services produced within the domestic territory during a period of one year factor cost means what the cost at which the good has been produced for example this one pen to produce or to manufacture this one pen i have to invest 10 rupees so this 10 rupees is nothing but my factor cost okay so second aggregate was gdp at fc next comes is ndp at mp net domestic product at market price still we are under the domestic concept only okay so net now we know what is net meaning of net is what value after deduction of depreciation okay d means domestic which means all the goods and services which has been produced within the domestic territory then p means nothing but your product MP means market price that means the price at which the commodity is getting sold in the market. You just have to combine all of these things and form a definition. It refers to net market value as I already said whenever it is MP you will be writing market value whenever it is FC we will be writing money value so ma net market value of all the final goods and services again only and only final goods uh, will be considered no intermediate goods are going to be considered produced within the domestic territory this is your domestic territory of a country during a period of one year again just remember this period of one year is mandatory to write after the definition of each aggregate okay next ndp at fc ndp at fc n stands for net net means what the value left out after the deduction of depreciation D means domestic that means all the goods and services which has been produced within the domestic territory. P stands for product that is your commodity. FC stands for your factor cost. Now whenever we use the term factor cost we are going to use money value. Factor cost means the cost at which the producer is producing the product. Now let us combine all of these things. It refers to net money value of all the final goods. Again all the final goods will be considered over here. Services provided within the domestic territory of the country 
domestic d is a domestic concept means all the goods and services produced within the domestic territory of a country during a period of one year ndpfc is also known as domestic income or domestic factor very 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 important so all the four concepts of domestic are done next what we are going to see is the national concepts what are the another four aggregates first four aggregates we have already done next four aggregates are coming up so four national concepts is gnp mp gnp fc nnp mp and nnp fc are the four important national concepts gnp mp stands for gross national product at market price gnp mp is gross national product at factor cost nnp mp is net national product at market price nnp fc is net national product at factor cost all the other things remain same only the concept of domestic is going to get replaced with national rest all the things are same what we did in the domestic concept so term national will signify production of only normal residents of the country to be included even if they are outside the domestic territory of the country so national means the income which we are going to incur in our country in our domestic territory be it be the resident of some normal resident of some other country okay this is what national over here signifies so let's start with our first aggregate g n p at mp now no more it would be domestic it is going to be national so g n p at mp that is gross national product at market price everything remains the same gross over here means the actual value of goods and services national means the goods and services produced by the normal resident of a country be it be situated in usa russia america wherever it is that is national p is nothing but product mp is the market price so as i said whenever we use the term mp we are going to write market value okay so mp is nothing but your market value that means the price at which the goods and services are being sold out in the market so it refers to gross market value of all the final goods and services again only final goods and services will be included intermediate goods the value of intermediate goods will not be included while computing national concept also services produced by normal resident of the country during a period of one year so if you notice the entire definition remains the same just the term domestic has been replaced by the term national so that was our first aggregate of national concept next next aggregate is g and p at fc so this here g again stands for the actual value inclusive of depreciation n stands for national that means the goods produced by the normal resident of a country p is nothing but product fc means nothing but factor cost which will be returned as money value factor cost is the cost at which the goods are being produced in the country so it refers to gross money value of all the final goods and services only final goods and services will be included uh, by normal resident of a country during a period of one year that's all for the second next aggregate is nnp at mp net national product at mp so net here means the same that is the value left after the deduction of depreciation the total value remaining after the 
depreciation is nothing but the net value. N is again a national concept that means the goods produced by a normal resident of the country. P is nothing but product. MP market price that means we are going to use the term market value. So, it refers to the term net market value of all the final goods and services produced by a normal resident of a country during one period of year. Next is NNP at FC, net national product at factor cost. Net the value remaining after the deduction of depreciation, national goods and services produced by the normal resident of the country. P stands for product and FC is nothing but your factor cost that is nothing but money value. The cost at which the goods is being produced in the economy. So, it refers to net money value for all the final goods and services produced by the normal resident of country during a period of one year. NNP at FC is also called as or it this aggregate can also be denoted as national income. So, that was it for the aggregates. Now, we have to see the conversion of aggregates. That means, if you want to convert one aggregate into the other aggregate, how are you going to do that? So, for that, I have a very simple trick for all of you. If you all remember this, if you all learn this trick, it will become very easy for conversion of aggregates. You can very easily in a minute can do the conversion of aggregates. A very important part from your chapter national income accounting, conversion of aggregate is the basic for all the numerical questions. Further, we are going to study the different methods of national income. So, in that method also, the conversion of aggregates are going to be required. So, kindly pay attention and understand how we can do the conversion of aggregates because it is the most, most, most crucial and important thing from the chapter. First conversion, we will be looking towards the gross and net. So, as I said already, gross is the actual value of the commodity. Net is the value which we get after the deduction of depreciation. So, that is why you can see that when gross, if you want to go from gross to net, you have to do deduct depreciation. So, that means gross minus dep is nothing but your net value. If you want to find out net value, then what you have to do? You have to deduct depreciation from gross. Same way, if you want to find out the value of gross from net, so formula can be net plus depreciation is equals to gross. That means, if you want to go from net to gross, you have to add depreciation. Very simple. Gross and debt is given to you. It is said you have to find out the net value. So, how we will find out net value? Gross minus debt. If net and debt is given to you and they are saying you to find out gross, very simple. Net plus debt will give you gross. Second comes domestic and national. Now, we know the concept of domestic. We know the concept of national. Domestic income will only include the income which is received within the domestic territory of the country. National income, we will be including the income which we are receiving from outside the country. So, if you want to go from domestic to national, you will have to add NFIA, that is net factor income from abroad. And if you want to go from national value to domestic value, you will have to deduct NFIA. Now, at times NFIA is not directly given to you in the question. So, in that case, again you have one formula for NFIA. NFIA is equals to net factor income from abroad minus net factor income to abroad. From means we are receiving the income, to means we are paying the income. So, receiving minus paying. Okay, is nothing but your net factor income from abroad. So, if you want to go from domestic to national, you will have to add NFIA. If you want to go from national to domestic, you will have to deduct NFIA. 
Last comes is market price and factor cost. Market price is the price at which the goods are being sold in the market. Factor cost is the cost at which the goods are being produced in the in the economy. So when, as we said, that you, if you want to go from market price to factor cost, you will have to deduct NIT because we don't charge taxes over there. But if you want to go from factor cost to market price, you will have to add NIT. Example, as I said, the factor cost is 10 rupees, but the market price is 12 rupees. So this 2 rupees is nothing but NIT. So, if you want to go from factor cost to market price, you will have to add it. But if you go from market price to factor cost, you will be deducting it. So, please understand this concept very carefully and very clearly. Once you are thorough with this concept, thorough with this uh, particular thing, you will be finding to solve the aggregates very nicely, very properly and in a very easy sense. So, if you want to go from gross to net, you have to deduct debt. If you want to go from net to gross, you have to add debt. I told you the logic behind it because gross is the actual value minus depreciation. Net value is the value after deduction of depreciation. Domestic to national. In domestic, we will be considering only the income which has been incurred from within the domestic territory. National concept is the concept wherein we will be considering the income of a normal resident from all over the country. So, if you want to find out domestic value, you will have to deduct NFIA from national. And if you want to find out national income, you will have to add NFIA to domestic. Market price and factor cost. If you want to go from factor cost to market price, you will have to add NIT and for going towards market price to factor cost, you have to deduct NIT. Again, for NIT, you have one more formula. If in case directly NIT is not given to you in the question, then in that time, you will have to find out with the help of the formula, which is IT minus subsidies. IT stands for indirect tax, subsidies is subsidies. And NIT at times is also known as GST, that is your indirect taxes. So at times in the question also, they might not give you IT. Indirect taxes will not be written clearly, they will be writing GST. Okay, so this is the small tip for the conversion. Now we will see two illustrations for it. First one, calculate NDP at FC. Okay, now we have to calculate the aggregate NDP at FC. And the aggregate, what are the things which are given to us? We have been given one aggregate that is GNP at MP. We have been given depreciation. We have been given NFIA that is net factor income from abroad and NIT is also given to us that is net indirect taxes. Now very simple thing first of all what you have to do is the aggregate which you want to find out keep it on the left hand side. So here we have to find out NDP at FC and the aggregate which you already have keep it on the right hand side. So GNP MP is already given to us. Now let us start doing the conversion. So, from gross, you want to go to net, okay? Gross value you have, but you have to, you want to go to net value because what we have to find out? We want to find out NDPFC, right? One aggregate will be given to us. You have to go to another aggregate. That is what the illustration, that is what the question is asking you. That convert NDPFC to GNPFB. To convert one aggregate into the other aggregate, this is how you will be converting. First, you will be going from gross to net. If you want to go from gross to net, what you have to do? You have to minus debt. Then national to domestic. Now, if you want to go from national to domestic, you know what is the relation between national and domestic? The relation between national and domestic is of NFIA. So, if you want to go from national to domestic, you want domestic value. So, but obviously, you will have to deduct NFIA from national. So, less. NFIA and PP is as it is. You will not change anything over there. MP to FC from market price to factor cost. The relationship between MP and FC is of NIT. So 
whether it will be added or deducted. So here it will be deducted because to go from MP to FC, you will have to deduct NIT. Okay, so you got everything, you got the formula. Now you have to put up the values. Value of GNP MP is 8000. So let us write 8000 minus value of depreciation is 600. So we'll write 600 minus NFIA is 300. So we'll write 300. Minus NIT is how much? 700. So, we will be writing as 700. Now, when you do this calculation, you get the answer as 6400. Very simple. How to do the conversion of aggregates? The given things are NNPFC, depreciation, subsidies, factor income from abroad, indirect tax and factor income to abroad. So, first of all, we have to do what? First of all, keep the aggregate which you want to find at left hand side. GDP MP you have to find out. Keep the aggregate at right hand side which you have already. NNPFC. Now, to go from net to gross, what do we do? We add depreciation. To go from national to domestic, national and domestic has the relationship of NFIA, so minus NFIA. To go from FC to MP, what do we do? We will have to add NIT. You should know what is the relationships, like gross and uh, net has the relationship of depreciation, Domestic and national has relationship with NFIA. Market price and factor cost has relationship with NIT. You should know all of these things. Okay. Now we know what to do. So let us see the given NNPFC is how much? 2000. Okay. Write down 2000. Plus depreciation is given to us in the question as 200. So 200. Now, NFIA, they have not given us NFIA directly. They have given us net factor income from abroad, net factor income to abroad. So, you will write the formula NFIA is equals to from abroad minus to abroad. So, from abroad is 110, to abroad is 50. So, 110 minus 50, which is how much? 60. Plus NIT, again NIT is not directly given to us in the question. They have given us IT and subsidies. So formula for NIT is what? It is IT minus subsidies. So how much it is? IT is 180 and subsidies is 70. So 180 minus 70. So this would come around 100 and now you just have to solve this equation 2000 plus 200 minus 60 plus 110. So the answer what you get is around 2250, 2250. So I hope the illustrations were quite easy for you all. Thank you for watching our video. For more updates, reach us on www.tgcampus.com or 1-800-267-2677 or connect at the rate tgcampus.com Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel TG Campus In. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp. Join our official Telegram channel TG Campus In. Chat with us on 8655682401